All right, hey everybody. So I was working on a, another project and I needed something that was like a keys, piano keys type style game. Um, I, I needed the, the mechanics of it for something I was working on and I got it working pretty decently so I thought I'd share that. Um, it's not exactly how I used it in the game that I got coming out but um, it's just kind of a bonus level in that game. But uh, anyway, I wanted to show the basics for that. I've seen some people ask and uh, I went through the work of figuring it out. So. Thought I'd go ahead and share it here. So, a real quick demo. Show it played here. This is an iPhone 4. So, I got an easy mode and a hard mode. And then here's a link to the tutorial. You can also download the source file um, at the website. But so you can click on easy mode, and then I have it mapped to keys. And you can see. the single ones and you got the double ones um, I basically just have C D and E key in here and it's just kind of repeating I haven't done any timing to it I don't there's no background music you could put all that stuff in here if you wanted. you could get extremely creative with this if you wanted um, it's pretty flexible the way it is I also don't have the timing set, the timing set perfectly when, it, when you touch it's actually um, anything that crosses that line for a tenth of a second will will be counted in and activated or uh, triggered so to speak but I'll get in and I'll show you how all this works in a second. But then, so that's easy mode, and you can go back to uh, hard mode. And then hard mode, you have to hit every key, or the game will be over. So if I miss one, it's gonna be over. And boom, there it's over. I missed one intentionally, so the game was over. Now I'll restart that, and I'll put debug mode on to kind of let you see what's going on there and then we'll get a little deeper into it. So debug, here's my character. You can kind of see the enemies going away. So now, you, if you know BuildBox, you probably kind of figured out what's going on there, but we'll come back to that. And I'll also go to main menu. Well, I guess I'll just start that one. Uh, you see this one no enemy characters down the center, center line there. So anyway, that's that. We'll close that for now. Um, we'll come back in here and we'll get into the uh, into the settings and how all that works. So uh, this is your mind map. Uh, this is a basic layout. So you got a main menu. You got the easy world, the hard world. They share the same UI, which is the the pause button, the counter, and then a left and a right uh, component action component action button. So component action, I renamed it left, and then I made another one and renamed it right. I also mapped these to the keyboard for easier testing. So this one's to the period key, and this one is to the comma, comma key. Uh, all the other stuff is pretty, pretty standard out of the box, didn't change anything there. Uh, the scoring I put as current world, coins, current center, and coins is kind of unique because when we get back to the world settings and objects uh, actions you'll see that actions are actually set to coins and that's what makes the counter go up and then just a simple pause button as a navigation button uh, that just pauses and a game over event observer and that just says when the game's over to go to the game over screen so game over event observer and the pause button game over pretty simple just standard stuff there nothing special and then the pause, if you can restart. Um, and then I just put a URL button in there for ease of use if you want to link directly to the post on the website. So now the, now the hard stuff. Um, I think that's pretty self-explanatory over here. Easy mode, hard mode with clear buttons on top, uh, navigation buttons on top, nothing special. So all the magic's done in these three uh, world and UI layouts. So I'll go into the world UI first. Um, actually, I'm sorry, I just talked about that. So now we'll go into Easy World. We'll just start there. So what have I done in here? We'll go through the options over here. Top down, character. The character, the default animation is simply, it's actually a circle. So if I click in here, it's actually a circle, but I have it way scaled down to 0 0.05. Uh, 0 0.05 by 0 0.05 makes it pretty much invisible on the page. You can kind of see it. Um, but it's the same color as that middle line, so you don't see it. And then this is kind of uh, one of the trickery parts. I made the collision a triangle that's kind of right above it. Um, that's not, it doesn't have to be perfect, but close. Close is good. And this is, you may have to come back in here and play with this later. You'll see. 
show you a little bit a little bit of that later um, so that's the character and then I'll show you down here the settings for the character this stuff's all pretty standard uh, max speeds this is what I changed the max speeds you can see what I zeroized out these uh, platform friction drag drag those are kind of important so change them to these settings uh, direct movement off forced on fixed rotation on and then you get down into the advanced move so to get these you go add advanced move and then start move is just going to be uh, on start so the event type is when the game starts start a forward upward motion of 20. all that really does it gets the ball rolling gets it moving uh, in a northerly direction here uh, next is going to be left move so there's a little bit of, this is where a little bit of the magic happens um, inside of the animation you'll see when I when I dragged and dropped this image onto the into build box it dropped it squarely on top of this crosshair and what I did is it dropped it in like that and I moved it over to there and there's a couple pixel gap there you can line it up perfectly if you want I'm just gonna leave it because this is a demo um, and then that's it for that so then you go into collision editor and make sure that it's still wrapped around this you could make it smaller if you wanted to make it a little more narrower you could do that I'll just take the default uh, if you want to reset it click on that one okay now down here I have it mapped to that button left so this is saying that that component the component action that we set in the world for the left so we said component action here and left is the name so that when we come into here in easy world and we go to the character and we scroll down to that advanced component or the advanced move that I added in called left move then the component is there's that that word left and it was a button from that page that I called left so with that anytime that that button on the UI is pressed this collision shape is going to be triggered which is off-centered to the left of the character hope that makes sense um, it's going to time out after point one after point one second and then it's going to go back to the normal animation or the normal collision shape so really you're just changing the collision shape for point one seconds same with the right it goes to the uh, sorry I'll go to the right button for point one seconds and you can change that timing play with it a little bit if you make it too high like point three then chances are in the in the game they can if they click when it's when it's passing the line right here it'll still be swung out here to the side when this one comes up and it'll end up click getting both of them when maybe they only meant to get one so kind of play with that timing uh, that's really it for the character stuff I got there's three three advanced moves that were added in from add component three of these advanced moves and you kind of got the settings for those now um, and also, like I said, this whole file is going to be available for download on the website. Um, no file sharing or anything. It's just going to be straight on the website. Um, so I don't have to worry about links expiring. I've shared stuff before and the links have expired. I'm not doing that anymore because then people keep posting to YouTube. Hey, the link's dead, the link's dead. So just host it on the website and it'll be there forever. Um, that's it for this. One thing I did kind of skip over was the settings, the world settings. So some of y'all might have might have caught them. The only things I really changed were the uh, score multiplier, uh, time warp I think I changed from 60 to 50, and velocity drag I might have changed. That was more specific to my game, doesn't really apply to this one. Um, and then same for the hard world. So something you should pay attention to here are the bound, is the bounding box. So clear up, that allows it to pass, and then can't pass right, can't pass left, and can't pass back. So here this is the character this is my character right here so you can see it's just a little tiny dot and if I debug it you'll see the collision shape for that character so there's that little tiny collision shape for the character so let's play it now see that again and see if you can follow it so easy mode we got it in debug there's my collision shape and when I hit the comma key you can see for a split second there it changes the collision shape and if it hits the action now I hit the period key. I can also click. So now I can go back and forth, period and comma key. There you go. That's all there is to it. 
Uh, let's see. So how am I getting the sounds on there? So the actions, I have a green tile on here. Um, and I changed uh, the animation placement to power up. And that's that's of note. And if you, if you change it to a character, you'll see why that's important. Um, and especially if you have duration of one set here because it it gets kind of quirky so you have to set this to zero and the preference is power up replace for the animation placement I also set us to type coin and I gave it one reward point and you'll also notice uh, the C key so that's the the sound that gets played with it so I downloaded a, a C key a D key and an E key and I attached it to the three actions that I have like I said, you could get way crazy complicated with this. You could do a C key, D key, you go do, do all the keys, and then you could do chords, and uh, I mean, the sky's the limit. You could even compile guitar sounds. You could have one one color, like you could have green tiles that if they're, here, I'll show you. Um, so, say, let me take the debug off. So you could say green tiles were only piano, and you could have just piano on this side, and then you could say blue tiles are only guitar, and you could have only guitar on this side. And you have the piano playing on one side, the guitar playing on the other side. I mean, however crazy you want to go. I'll also say, and I'm not doing this, but I'll also say if I turn off the the background here, you could use the let me turn off the clouds too. You could turn you could use these the grids as spacing for a beat. Um, I played with it a little bit, but I, I just don't have the time to mess with that right now. So you could use this as a beat, you could say, and you could change the speed uh, back here. You could slow it down. Well, not here. It would be for the character. Yeah, I think the character is where you're going to want to do that. So the character speed. Yeah. So on start and so we could change this to like 10, 10, and then the on start to 10. So that it starts out half the speed it is now, and then that changes the the beat, the tempo, if you will, for the music. So if you're very musically inclined, there's quite a bit of options here. You can map all kinds of different sounds. You could split this up. You could split it up into four lanes if you wanted. Um, you can make it required or not required to hit it, and I'm going to show you that here in a second on, for the hard level. But um, so th this is kind of how how I went about it. And then I put a red tile in there too. If you wanted to put something into like I don't know, that's totally optional. I could delete it. It doesn't matter. But uh, and then transparent enemy. We'll get into that in a second. But um, so you, you can see what I did here. It's nothing extremely complicated. It's just a different way to arrange things to make something work with Buildbox. So I'll take my last couple of minutes because I'm trying to keep it under 15. The last couple of minutes on how I did the hard one. And I didn't do a lot for this one because it's, it's kind of laborious to set up um, for the creator. And I'll put debug mode on and you can kind of see what's going on. And then I'll put the active connection mode. So this is the key for these so all of these in the middle you can tell because they're red that they're enemies so they're transparent enemies they i blew them up four times i think i'd made them like 10 or 20 pixels and so i made them bigger just so you could see them on here and, and then what i did is i attached the action this is an action so it's one of these guys so i attached the action to the enemy so that when you if you get the action, if you hit the action, the enemy will disappear instantly. It will disappear instantly because you set the timeout to zero, the duration to zero. So because so as soon as you hit this action, because it's connected to that enemy, it's going to make the enemy disappear. And where is your that is your your shape there? So it makes that bad guy disappear so he can't hit you, your collision shape here and if you don't hit this one then that enemy will hit your shape so let's watch that in action again so we'll go hard mode and i gotta be ready for this one so ready set go and disappear 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 You saw I hit the line there at the very end, and that, that killed the character, basically, or ended the game, if you will. So that's all there is to it. Um, it's not too tricky, but it is kind of neat. I mean, that did take quite a bit of finagling and finesse and figuring out and trying different things. and uh, But it worked in the end, and it actually it's, uh, it's very... I think this would be extremely versatile if somebody wanted to use this method to make a full-blown... You could make a full-blown keys game. You could put some animations to it, put some, some snazzy effects to it. Um, and like I said, this was a add-on bonus game to something that I'm going to release here in the next week or two. 
putting the finishing touches on it and then uh and then I'll actually I'll upload it, do the localization for it and everything, and then probably plan. I'm, I'm shooting for the release on around 1 October. But this is just one of the bonus games. Um, again, this is going to be available for download, so check the link at the bottom of the page or video or description on YouTube. Um, make sure you subscribe because I'm going to be putting out some more of these. Um, i got a couple other ideas that I want to do. It takes a little bit of work to put these together, so I don't, I don't think I'll be doing one every day, but uh, I will be putting them out. Um, Comment if you got questions. You guys are good about commenting. I'm not great about commenting back, but I do eventually try to, and I'm trying to get a lot better about commenting. So if you have a question, I'll try to answer it. Um, and go check out the website and download this stuff and share it. So uh, that's all I got. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Good luck.